Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're going to talk about automatic labels in layout. So this is something that's come up, I can't remember if it's the forum or a live stream, but uh, talking about the labels, the information you can get from a label in layout. And it really all depends on the amount of information that's in the entity inside of SketchUp, as far as what you can get to, which makes sense, obviously. But uh, not just what information is there, but what kind of thing it is. If it's an edge or a face versus a group versus a component, um, there's a big difference with the amount of information you put in there and then thus the amount of information you report on once you get in the layout. So we're going to take a look at a model. I got a bunch of different things in a, in a quick model and we're going to take it in the layout and see exactly what we can label. Let's do it. Okay, so I all I did was I created this this view of my model with a couple things on the screen, exported it to layout, that was it. Um, in fact, I did so little, I didn't even change this to hybrid yet, so I still have these big clunky uh, choppy lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to hybrid real quick. Let that render and we'll see. There we go, some nice smooth lines, much better. That's, that's gonna be easier to work with. All right, so we're just gonna, the only tool we're using here is the label tool. I'm gonna just start putting some labels on and we're gonna see what we can actually pull from for a different entity type. So the simplest thing right here is the edge. So I'm gonna grab this edge, pull up, click again, click again. And the default value that it pulls out of this edge is edge length. So if I hit this little, see how I have this little down arrow right here? If I click that down arrow, it's gonna tell me the, the auto text that I can populate in here to get information automatically. So one is the length, Second is the coordinates, the X, Y, Z coordinates, or I can actually choose a different tab over here, viewport, and I could put in some of this other information. Uh, so last view, the scale, ratio, all this stuff. I could put this stuff in also, but uh, honestly, I'm gonna probably just be skipping viewport for most of this, because uh, we're gonna look at tags or information. Sorry, oh, don't say tags, that's something different. Uh, labels that we can put onto these items. So we won't be looking at viewports, we're gonna look more at the, the actual entity. So in here, it makes the most sense to have the edge. So I could just leave it as edge length. And then when I click out, it's gonna populate that. You can, this is just auto text. So uh, if I wanted to put in something, additional information here, like, uh, I don't know why you do this, but let's, let's just say that. Say that was important, we need to know that. So one foot total length. Again, just that auto text plus whatever you want to put in there. So that goes for all these things we're about to do. All right, let's grab the label again and let's go to this piece right here. So if I was to hover over and click and add a line to the edge, I would have the same option of edge length. And we're going to add a second one, actually point to the face. I'm going to pull that up and bring it over here. And you see that when I, when I click on the face with the arrow, it gives me a totally different option, which is area face area <laughs> so it tells me that's a full four feet square and then of course I have coordinates again so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that in and it's going to give me that all right pretty simple that's an edge that's a face so let's keep moving next thing I have here is a group so again I'm going to go in the middle click 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 and the first option comes up with is face area because it knows that this is actually a face. But if I click down here, you'll see I have a different entity level to report off of, which is the group. This is a solid group. So I do have the option of giving the volume. So if I click on that, it's gonna tell me that it has one foot cubed volume. So that works on groups. If I had just had a, a bunch, if this was not a grouped entity, it would give me the ability to put, you know, the same thing, the length of edges, and then the, the area of faces, it only gives me this closed if it actually is put in a group. Over here, we have some components. So I'm gonna show you how, how a group and a component look different. So this one is just a cylinder. This one over here is a square, but uh, how they were made was pretty much the same, except this one was saved as a component. So here's the difference between a component and a group. So if I come in here, you see rather than saying group, it actually says, cylinder because cylinder is the name of this component. So it's a little bit different than what I saw before. Um, so over here I can look at like the face area and that kind of stuff. But 
as a component, I have the additional information that is saved into the component beyond uh, just that basic information. So if I click here, I could actually have it label cylinder. This is kind of a nice option for labeling, you know, models where I have a bunch of different pieces, that sort of thing. If I actually am very careful about putting in the proper name for things, then uh, it's real quick to go in and label them. If I come in and label the second one, so these are just copies of the exact same component. If I click this one, uh, you'll see that the information is the same. There is nothing really differentiating copy one versus copy two versus copy three if they're all the same component. So I could tag a different information on here, but it's not going to have some different option because it's another copy. Same information still shows up. All right, so that's some pretty basic stuff. Over here on the left, we have a couple of components that I downloaded from 3D Warehouse. First, we have this super fancy uh, office chair. Let's, let's just tag that, pull this up, and see what we got here. All right, so again, viewport and face are in here because I clicked onto a face as opposed to an edge. But then also, again, this is a component, so I have the name of the component here as an option. The other thing that was included in this component was a description. So I could put in, okay, what's, what's the name? Or I could pick the description and it will just show that then on the screen. So pretty simple. And this is, this is not automatic. It's a couple extra clicks when you hit create component, but not difficult to do, add that stuff. What we have over here is a component with a lot more information. So if I click this out, I'm gonna get, again, the default's always gonna be component. Oops, I accidentally clicked, sorry. Um, if I ever want to come back in here afterwards, by the way, I should point that out. I can just click on the label, just double click on it, and it will come back up and I'll get the arrow to drop down and choose what I want. So you see very different information in here. This is a dynamic component, so it has a whole bunch of additional information in here. I could just put the name of the, the thing uh, or the component, or I'm sorry, the component description. And I have a bunch of other stuff here that was changed by dynamic component this of this component. So in this case, I might maybe I'll put one label up here that says, what is this thing? And then we'll do a separate one. We'll do another label onto a handle. And then we'll say, what is this handle? Well, this handle is, thank you for asking. And I can come here to the handle style, make it statement, and then click out here. There we go. Um, so you can add multiple callouts. To, and it's not, it's not because I clicked on the handle. That, would, that same option shows up anywhere inside the component but I can create multiple components that are pulling information from the same thing. So here I have on the end, here's this face me com component. I could come in here and say, what's the, all right, let's call that, let's put that definition on there. And then we'll do another one right underneath it that says the description. And then I can have both those things connected to the same component that works. So we did one on most of these. I didn't want you guys to think you could only do one call out. You can do as many as you want. Um, and then of course, like I said, all of this is just text. So anytime I could come in here, select any of these and overwrite it with regular, whatever text I want. I don't have to keep the auto text. I can change it, but uh, that's, that's the information that shows up there automatically when you place labels onto the different items that come in from SketchUp. Hopefully that, that, was, that was kind of exhaustive. Every once in a while we like to do kind of a deep dive and that's showed just about everything I could think of as far as putting label onto a thing from, from SketchUp in layout. Uh, if you have any questions though, if I miss something, uh, if there's any confusion about what I was doing, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you thought of a different thing, a scenario you might want to use it for, want to check and see if that would work. If you have any if there's any lack of clarity about how these things were created in SketchUp, pretty basic, uh, but brought in here. If you don't get that, let me know in the comments. And if you did like this video, appreciate if you clicked like down below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe because we create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, is that comment. Leave me a comment down below what you think about this. If you think there's another thing that would make a good video, let me know about that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.